My name is Krista Fatumata Silla, and I am a West African, well actually I should say Pan-African dance instructor and choreographer and lecturer and also a fitness instructor too. Um, well, Krista is my born name. That name is very significant to my mother. Um, she really kind of received that name at what she feels like was the height of her spirituality. Um, Fatumata was a name that was given to me when I went to Guinea, West Africa to study. Um, and so it was the host, which I call also my big brother, tradition to kind of give your students a name. So Fatumata was what they gave me. And I've carried it ever since. And Fatu for short, so most people say Fatu. I think the seed was planted when I was little. Um, my mother tried me in the other dance classes and it, it just didn't work. But I always loved to dance. I could learn, like I would watch Janet Jackson's videos and her routines when she would perform at uh, awards and I would learn the whole thing and perform it for my family, like full out, just costume and everything. Um, so I was always into it in some way, but I just wasn't doing it through a program. Um, the first time she took me to see an African dance performance, I actually believe the group was Nigerian, and the sound of the drums, it stuck with me. So when I got older and I got around the Afrocentric community in Atlanta, Georgia, that was where it picked back up, and then shortly after that I moved here. And I was here a good year before I met anyone who was into it here. There was just, it was like devoid of any sort of culture here, or at least I thought it was. And I actually happened to be working at a health food store and someone came in and she was like, I'm starting an African dance class. And that was it, like I never looked back. And that was when I started with La Joe Theater of African and Caribbean Dance. So in my dance fitness format that I created called Afroconic, um, well technically it's the Afroconic Booty Dance, um, workout, which was really named that from marketing. Uh, we know that people perk up when they see the word booty, you know, so. Um, but those dances, what I concentrate on in that class is what I call the sensual dances across the continent. So these are dances that would have been done to show off, to attract a mate, um, such as Lambul from Senegal, that's a dance of young maidens, so it's very hip oriented. There is also Mapuka, and Mapuka um, is basically like a playful jiggling of the buttocks, but in a um, very strategic fashion. So it's sort of like a look what I can do and displaying and celebrating fertility. Like if I can do this, I can bear lots of healthy babies. Um, and I think it's a great, I think it's a great outlet for women. Women are so, um, they have that part of them pushed down so much. And so in that class, I only allow women, men are not allowed to attend, so that there is a safe place for them to really explore that side of themselves and then leave feeling more sensual and feeling more sexy. And I've gotten everything from um, thank you posts and messages from husbands, <laughs> from happy husbands saying, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for Afroconic. I've gotten that, I've gotten uh, reports from boyfriends that say, you know, when she comes to your class, she just shakes her butt everywhere after she comes to your class, but I'm like, well, you know, she's happy. She's happy and she's celebrating that part of her. So although Afroconic is strictly for women, though I've been toying with the idea of having special events where men are welcome, because men need to learn how to move their hips too. Yes, men move your hips as well. Um, the West African traditional classes have always been open to men. It's just been a little harder to get them in. And maybe if you don't want to dance, um, we always welcome men to come and learn to drum um, because we definitely need that balance of energy and we definitely need more skilled drummers um, in Jacksonville. And it's a great outlet. It's a great creative outlet. And it's great exercise too. It's great cardio um, when men are drumming. There, for me, there is no separation between what I'm doing and my spiritual path. So basically one reason why I'm sticking with this is because I just, I feel like it's what I'm supposed to do. And I've had so many, what I would call confirmations and blessings, you know, those signals, those synchronicities that let you know you're along the right path. You know, no matter how, how much it may appear you're having hard times, you know, there's times when you just know. Um, a lot of the traditions and the dances that I'm teaching are coming from traditions where 
these are spiritually based dances. You know, these are expressions of faith um, and of spirituality. I don't think you can really separate the two. You know, even some of the dances that are just celebratory, um, you know, there's still a spiritual basis. And I think dancing, period, when you are submitting, so what you're doing in dance, you are submitting you, the you that's ego-based. You are submitting it, or supposed to be, to the music and to let the music express itself through you. And I think anytime you sublimate the ego and open up, there's nothing like more spiritual than that. I don't think there's anything more spiritual than that. Nowadays, we, we see a lot of other things happening. We see dancing for showmanship, you know, we see that stuff. But I think the real core is when you remove yourself and your body is an instrument. You know, that's when it really becomes something special, almost holy, you know, so to speak.